the next act in this section. Are you enjoying yourself so far, yes? yes. Our next act is Tasha Gray. She's going to talk to you from the viewpoint of a neuroscientist. She's been practicing earlier on. She was very funny. I know you're going to enjoy it. So please, let's start the applause again. We'll build it up. Please welcome to the stage, Tasha Gray. and I am a neuroscientist. Uh, usually when I tell people that I do neuroscience, I get a mixed reaction. Uh, one lady genuinely asked me whether it was really interesting that I studied new things. <laughs> um, quite often I get asked to interpret people's dreams. One guy told me that he dreamt that he'd woken up and he was completely paralysed. And uh, it was really scary because like something, was, something really heavy was sitting on his chest so he couldn't like move. Um, and I said, oh my god, that's really interesting, it's called sleep paralysis. And it's when your brain forgets to tell your body that you've woken up and you're allowed to move. And then I got off him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in my research, um, I look at what happens to brain activity uh, when stuff goes wrong. So for instance, stroke, or if you have epilepsy, or um, if you get like banged on the head really hard. Um, and to do this, I uh, listen to rats' brain cells with an electrode. Um, and it's quite amazing, really, because um, uh, brain cells actually sound a bit like popcorn going off in a microwave, just like pop, 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 pop. Um, and it's really good as well, because all I have to do to make these cells fired up is um, play with, you know, the rats' um, whiskers. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and as you might imagine, these, these uh, experiments can get quite long and quite lonely. One Valentine's Day, me and my lovely rat were sat in the lab, just the two of us. His brain cells were like popping away. And uh, all of a sudden I hear this woman's voice. I'm like, oh my God, that's really weird. Not least of all, because all of my rats are male. Um, but to, I wanted to find out what he was trying to tell me. So I turned up the speaker like louder and louder until I heard doors closing going down. And I was like, oh my god, that's so depressing. Even though he's asleep, he's still trying to dream of ways to escape our Valentine's Day together. <laughs> still, at least he's less obvious about it than my boyfriend. <laughs> but then my boyfriend doesn't really like experiments either. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but my boyfriend might be a little bit more disturbed to know about the infection I think I might have. About a fifth of you in the audience will have it as well. You'll get it from your cats. Um, I might have phrased that incorrectly. Basically, I'm describing Toxophasa gondii, which is a parasite, uh, and it starts its life cycle off in a cat. Uh, and then the cat poops it out, and then mice eat the poop. Bear with me. <laughs> and, and it's really amazing, because when it gets inside the mouse, it travels to the mouse's brain and makes the mouse like, uh, feel as though the smell of cat's urine is like a major turn on. <laughs> so, it's true. In, in a weird, bizarre twist of events, Jerry ends up chasing Tom, and so Tom manages to see Jerry. <laughs> oh, what is that? And so, we have this gorgeous, like, beautiful circle, like a sort of Lion King circle. The circle of shite <laughs> continues round and round. Now, what's so terrifying about that, you ask? Well, this, this parasite can affect humans as well. Um, so, either eating uh, dirty food or by cleaning up after your cat's litter, which is why I think I might have it. Um, and uh, if you want to find out whether you've got the infection, uh, there's a really simple test that you can do on YouTube. Um, and it basically involves uh, just seeing how long it takes before you end up watching cat videos again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shameful addiction. Um, uh, but scientists have actually found that people who are infected tend to be uh, less conscientious, they tend to be more impulsive, um, and they tend to be, they, they're actually twice as likely to be involved in a car accident. So, in other words, you turn into Mario Balotelli. <laughs> Um, and it's quite scary, because if he is in fact infected, which I suspect he might be, um, it's getting worse. This happened on Monday. <laughs> um, the cat's on it. Um, <laughs> why always me? You always ask, well, it might be something to do with this cat. This is a Manchester City mascot cat. Um, 
And uh, so I think it's like a lesson to us all that you should always wash your hands after stroking your cat. Um, so, um, yeah, not enough people are afraid of Toxy G or of Balotelli for that matter. Um, but instead, a lot of people have strange phobias of like animals and stuff. Can, could you raise your hands if you're afraid of spiders? Any arachnophobes in it? Yeah. Anybody afraid of snakes? Yeah. Anyone afraid of whales? It's a real thing. Phalanophobia. Anyone afraid of whales? Whales are deadly. Deadly, deadly. Tom Jones especially. Right? Scary as shit. Um, but, in fact, there are some people who are biologically incapable of developing phobias, right? Um, so, the amygdala... Ooh, that works. Um, the amygdala is the part of the brain that responds to, like, terrifying sights and sounds, like Tom Jones singing. Um, and in some very, very rare cases, the amygdala, like, shrivels up and dies when people are really young, and so they become basically fearless. Um, and so scientists have used these people to work out why normal people are afraid of like life-threatening traumatic events such as listening to Tom Jones singing um, or being in a scientific study um, or trying to stand up comedy. <laughs> um, so what happens uh, when normal people uh, uh, breathe in CO2, carbon dioxide, is that they find it really unpleasant. It sort of feels like and they're suffocating, they don't like it at all. Um, but when these fearless people breathe in carbon dioxide, they absolutely lost their shit, right? <laughs> Think about it, they've never been afraid of anything in their lives, and now this invisible gas is making them shit themselves. They, they reported all of their symptoms, right? Things like um, uh, shortness of breath, trembling, losing touch with reality, chills, fear of dying, fear of going crazy, they felt like their life was being sucked out of them, which I think is really awesome, right? <laughs> Firstly, because we know now that um, fear can be produced not just in the amygdala, but also in parts of the brain that we didn't know about before. And secondly, importantly, I think it's a very, very good incentive to prevent global warming, right? <laughs> Lest we all start running around shitting our pants like Paul the Radcliffe, right? <laughs> So, if we manage to avoid that scenario, fingers crossed, um, remember that it's neuroscience that you have to thank for your clean underwear. <laughs> thank you very much.